Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max Experiments at Large. Science Max! Newton's third law is the science behind balloon powered rocket cars. It's also the science behind a maxed out rocket car that I can ride. Plus, bowling balls and an interrupting sign. Today on Science Max Experiments at Large. <laughs> Greetings, Science Maximites. I am Phil McCordick, and this is Science Max Experiments at Large. Today, we're going to be experimenting with the balloon powered car. Here's how it works <laughs> it all has to do with Newton's third law. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, we don't we don't have to do this now. We can this is all for later. We can build the cars first and then we can uh let's go over here. So how do you build a balloon-powered car? Well, I suggest you be science maximites because there's any number of ways you can build a balloon-powered car. You do not have to follow my design. You should come up with one of your own. It may even be better than the one I built. But I will give you some tips, though, that make it a lot easier. First of all, you need something to stick your balloon on that has an opening on it. I used a turkey baster for this car. I just pop the top off and remember to tell an adult that you're using the turkey baster. And then you stick the balloon on there and it allows you to attach something to the car and it also makes it easier to blow up the balloon. <laughs> you can use any number of things, even just uh, any kind of tube that you find lying around. It helps you attach the balloon to the car and it helps you blow up the balloon way easier. The other thing you should think about when you make your balloon powered car is how you're going to make the wheels roll. Once you've decided on the base of the car, you could use anything, even just a piece of cardboard like this, you can do your wheels in two ways. The first way is to attach the wheels to the axle. This is how I made the axle of this car. I used a shish kebab skewer and I stuck it inside a straw, just like that. And then I attached the lids to the shish kebab skewer. So the lids and the shish kebab skewer are attached and they rotate in the straw. That's one way to make the wheels turn. The other way is to tape down the axle or whatever you're going to use uh, and have the wheels spin around on the axle. Two great ways to make your wheels turn and it really kind of depends on the wheels you're using. You can make your own design and keep refining it and making it better and faster or do what I like to do and make a whole bunch of different cars. So we've got this one. Duh. This one I made out of paper plates, and this is a snorkel. Awesome. This one is the rock car, because there's a rock on it. I've got uh, the dragster model. It's a long broom handle, and it might not work that well, but who, who knows? And this is my favorite design. It's made out of waffles and an ice cube tray. This is why I make a whole bunch of different cars, because I can race them. Sunday, 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 at the Science Maxadrome. It's the balloon-powered car winner take all drag race of awesome. First up, the Eliminator. <laughs> Woohoo! Better late than never, it's the Procrastinator. <laughs> Crushing the competition, it's the Terminator! <laughs> Feel the chill of the refrigerator! <laughs> And last but not least, the um, regurgitator. Uh, 
Well, when you build your balloon-powered cars, you can figure out what worked or uh, what didn't work and try modifying your designs to make them work even better. That is science. And now we're gonna max it out because this is Science Max Experiments at Large. So we're gonna take that small balloon-powered car that we just built and we're gonna make it much, much bigger. I'm gonna go to the Center for Skills Development and Training and we're gonna use the science behind the small balloon-powered car and we're gonna make it big. That science is Newton's third law. But there's Newton's plenty of third law. No, there's, for every action, there's, there's plenty of time for this later. We're not doing action. we're not doing this bit now. We're doing that bit in a minute. So we can we, we, No, I, I said we're doing it later. We're doing it later. <sighs> Whoa. Uh, hi, Sarah. Hi, Phil. This is Sarah, and she's got a master's degree in physics from McMaster University. That's right. And we're going to be talking about Newton's third law. Ooh, look out, look out, duck. Uh, sorry, sorry. There was a sign that kept coming in. Um, never mind. Newton's third law. Well, what is that? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Right. So how does that work with our balloon car? Ah, cool. OK, so if you blow up the balloon, What's going to happen when you release it is the air is going to push out with a certain force, which in turn is going to cause the cart to move forward with the exact same force. Yeah, works great. So how come it doesn't work with my rock cart? Ah, wow. Well, actually, it did work. So the balloon still pushes with the exact same force, which causes the cart to have the exact same force push forward. But your rock is really heavy, so you probably didn't see it move. Oh, so a lighter cart works better with the same amount of force. That's it. Well, there you go. Newton's third law. What? Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. I'm really starting to dislike that sign. Phil, are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Our small balloon-powered car works because of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The air pushing out the balloon this way pushes the car with the same amount of force this way. So, in order to max it out, the plan is just to get a bigger wheeled cart and a much bigger balloon. So, everything should work out the same. Okay, so, sir, oh, I thought what we would do is I would, in order to max out the balloon-powered car, what we need is a cart to start with, and then I ride it. And we have a giant balloon, and then I go. Do you have a giant balloon? Ha 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 Giant balloon! So, step one, uh, Sarah blows up the balloon. OK. Wait, 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 wait. Use this air compressor. It'll probably be a lot faster. Sarah and I get to work blowing up the balloon, and it takes a long time. A very long time. OK, human-sized balloon-powered car test. Take one. All right, Sarah. You got it? Yeah. OK, let it go. Okay, go, go. Let it go. I and did. You did let it go. I just let go. Nothing is happening. It's not coming out fast enough, and you're a bit too massive. I don't think it's going to work like this. Really? Yeah. OK. Uh, balloon powered car test two. No fill. I'll just take it. And... <laughs> what happened? Uh, I don't think it worked. The balloon popped. Phil, are you OK? This is why you wear protective eyewear. Uh, yeah. So that didn't work? No. No. Should we get another balloon? Uh... I think uh, we need something else. OK, well, the air coming out of the balloon just what, didn't have enough force, so. We need the air to come out with more force. Yeah, do we get, what, a bigger, a bigger balloon? I don't think that's going to work. I don't think it's that. I think we need something with compressed air. Oh, like a scuba tank or a? Fire extinguisher, something like that. Yeah, that, that's what we need. OK, sure. Well, we can, all right, so I don't know if that's safe to do that. So we'd have to build, a, like, a cage or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work on this. All right, well, back. Back to the drawing board. So okay. what we should do is we should get we need a- need to find these tanks. You get the tanks, and then we make a, like a frame out of aluminum or something. OK, that could work. Yeah, That's they can hold idea. the tanks, so yeah. they're safe. And then what we should do is- Who was Isaac Newton? He was a mathematician and probably number one on the list of top scientists of all time. 
Albert Einstein said, Isaac Newton was the smartest person that ever lived. You've got to be special if Einstein is calling you smart. Newton's three laws of motion was a huge idea, but did you know Newton also came up with the idea of gravity? The famous story is that in 1666, Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree when he watched an apple fall and wondered why. Hey everyone, I just invented gravity, which was a big relief because up until then, everyone was just floating around. Okay, so it didn't happen like that. He didn't invent gravity, he gave a name to this invisible force and then described how it works. Not only did it make things fall down, but it was the same force that kept the moon circling the Earth and the Earth circling the sun. And he invented a new kind of math to explain how. We now call it calculus. See, I told you he was smart. He's very smart. This is hydrophobic coating. Hydrophobic literally means afraid of water, but it's not actually afraid of water. The chemistry of a hydrophobic coating prevents water molecules from penetrating anything you spray it on. You can get this stuff at the hardware store, and if you want, be science maximites and get an adult and think of the coolest thing you could spray with hydrophobic coating. I like to use things that do not go well when you put them in water, like uh, tissue. Yeah, doesn't look great when it gets wet. Here's a tissue coated in hydrophobic coating. Huh? Weird. Or it works the same with a paper towel. Paper towel in water, paper towel covered in hydrophobic coating, stays dry. Or how about a dinner roll? Dinner rolls really don't like water. See? Gross. But a dinner roll coated in hydrophobic coating? Weird. Just don't eat it. Now, it's time to max it out. I have coated half of my lab coat in hydrophobic coating, and the other half, I have not. Hydrophobic coating, regular lab coat. Half of me is wet, and half of me is dry. What's more, half of my outfit ended up being wet and half dry because the lab coat was protecting my outfit from getting wet. Now it's time to max it out even more. We have coated my entire outfit in hydrophobic spray. My shirt, my pants, and my lab coat. The pants have been taped to rubber boots, so no water's getting in there. And my shirt has been taped to my pants, so no water's getting in there. So here's the question. Can I get into the pool and out of the pool and stay dry? Let's find out. In the pool, out of the pool, and I'm still mostly dry. Now here's what really happened. I got into the pool, and I realized I should have duct taped the pocket, because all the water went in there, down into the rubber boots, started filling up the rubber boots, and now my entire leg is full of water because the hydrophobic coating isn't letting it come out. So the hydrophobic coating isn't keeping the water out, now it's keeping the water in. Let's take a closer look at Newton's third law. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. OK. All right, let's watch it back. When the sign hits me, I exert a force on the sign in the opposite direction. That makes the sign stop moving. It also exerts an equal force on me, causing me to fly off in this direction. Now, if I was to push this sign, I'm not only pushing the sign this way, but my feet are pushing against the ground in the opposite direction. It's, um, well, it's really easier to see if I'm not standing on the ground. Um, no, oh, hold on. Okay, so, huh? Oh, okay. So now that I'm hanging, watch. I push on the sign, but when I exert force on the sign to make it go this way, I go that way. Well, actually, it's, it doesn't work as well because the sign isn't as heavy as I am. So wait, I have this over here. This is a, a barrel, and it has stuff in it, and it weighs as much as I do. OK, so watch. If I push on the barrel like that, I go away from it as much as it goes away from me. So. There you have it. Newton's. Newton's third. No, hold on. Newton's. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. Okay, go. 
Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, using a giant balloon to push me on a cart, uh, didn't work. And I... Ah! What happened? <laughs> the plan now is to use the compressed gas cylinder. Just like a balloon, these cylinders contain a lot of air. If we get a cart and put a gas cylinder in a cage, for safety, on the back and open the valve, the escaping air might have enough force to push me. This is two cubic meters of air. If we were to put it in a balloon, the balloon would be this big. But if we compress the air, we can fit it all into one of these, a steel tank. This is what we're going to be using next for our air-powered car. Got it? Yep. All right. Good. So Sarah and I have been hard at work, and we've built the air-powered cart. We can't call it a balloon-powered cart anymore, because now we've got a compressed air tank. So it's not a balloon that powers it. Exactly. OK, so I'm going to sit on here. Sarah's going to turn on the tank, and I'm going to go. And before we do this, we should say, do not, under any circumstances, try this at home. We are trained professionals. You ready? I'm ready. OK, high five first. OK, now we do it. OK, so before I turn the tank on, make sure your feet are down and the brakes are on. Gotcha. Uh, Don't take them off till I say go. You have got it. All right. Ready. OK. Uh, yeah, it did work, but I feel I feel like it could work better. You want to go faster? I do want to go faster. This reminds me of the rock car. Yeah. Well, we didn't have a big enough balloon. We need more force. We need more force. So should we get a bigger tank? Let's get more tanks. More, more tanks, more force. You're going to go faster forward. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. High five. All right, let's do it. All right. This is Newton's Cradle, and it's a really cool toy that demonstrates all kinds of laws of motion, including Newton's third law. Newton's third what you do law, is you pull this one ball out, and when it hits these balls, they exert force on that ball to make it stop moving, but it exerts force on these balls, which travels through the balls and makes this one on the end fly out, like that. Now, there's a lot going on here, but you can really see how the force is equal that you put in and you get out if you use two balls. I swing two balls up, and two balls go out that side. Isn't that cool? Now, it wouldn't be science max unless we maxed it out. So come on. Whoa! OK. This is one we built out of bowling balls. Bowling balls. Bowling balls. <laughs> Instead of smaller balls. And I think it's going to work the same way. Let's find out. You throw one out, and, and <laughs> yeah, it works the same. OK, now let's try it with two balls. OK, ready? Wait, 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 wait. And two balls throw them out. And two balls on that side. All right, so there you have it. Whoa. Newton's third law. Oh. Ah. Newton's ah. third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So our single pressurized tank created enough force to move me, but not very fast. The plan now is to do two things. First, we're going to triple the amount of thrust by using three tanks. We're also going to use some pipes that lock into each other to give me an initial push. These pipes slide together, and when the air is turned on, the pressure in the pipes will cause them to slide apart, which will push me forward. After that, I use what's left in the tanks to keep going. All right, now it's time to max it out. I've enlisted the help of a few more Science Max people. Thank you very much, Corey. You'll see now we have three tanks of compressed gas. And we've also got this nifty little contraption. How does this work, Sarah? All right, so each tank is attached back, to a tube. Yeah. And you can see that each tube goes into this one main tube. So when we turn them on, pressure's going to build up, and we're going to go forward with more force. Well, that's great. And Reed is stacking cinder blocks. Thanks, Reed. Uh, up so that will push. Uh, the pipe will push against cinder blocks, and then I'll go that forward. way. All right, well, are you guys ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. 
Now, again, I have to say, thank you, Corey, I've got it. This is something you definitely don't want to try at home. We are all trained professionals. We have a physics degree here. We've got TV people that make sure that this is safe. So uh, watch it and enjoy, but please don't try any of this at home. Okay, I'm ready. Sarah, count me down. Three, two, one. Uh oh! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> 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 that was awesome! That was really awesome! All right, high fives! High fives! Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> and it's raining now, so it looks like we're gonna have to stop. So thank you very much for joining us on Science Mac Experiments at Large in our episode on Newton's Third Law.